The triquetrium is triangular or pyramid shaped and is located at the medial aspect of the proximal roll. It is on the ulnar side of the wrist but it does not directly articulate with the ulna. It is not involved in the radiocarpal joint. Instead, it's involved in the midcarpal joint. It consists of several surfaces and it articulates with three bones, the lunate, the hamate, and the pisiform. There are no muscle origins or insertions, and on a lateral radiograph, the triquetrum will be the most dorsal bone. In this video, we're going to use a right hand specimen and a left bone. The proximal surface faces medial. It contains a convex portion that articulates with the triangular fibrocartilaginous complex, or the TFCC, and it does not articulate with the ulna. The distal surface faces lateral and is significant for an articular surface that contains both a concave and a convex portion. The convex portion is oval shaped and it articulates with the hamate. Because this joint surface is made up of both a concave and a convex portion, it is described as an ellipsoid joint with rotational motion. Of the three articular surfaces found on the triquetrum, the articular surface for the hamate is the largest. The dorsal surface is extra-articular and rough for the attachment of ligaments. It's divided into two portions by a transverse ridge, also known as the posterior tubercle. Two dorsal extrinsic carpal ligaments attach proximal to this ridge, and those are the dorsal radiocarpal and the ulno triquetral ligaments. Also, distal to this ridge, one intrinsic ligament attaches, and that's the dorsal intercarpal ligament. The palmar surface, also known as the volar surface, consists of a medial and a lateral region. The medial region contains a small, oval-shaped articular surface for the pisiform. It is the smallest of the three articular surfaces found on the triquetrum. The lateral portion is rough for the attachment of ligaments. The piezo-triquetral joint derives its stability from the flexor calpi onerus tendon and the piezo-triquetral piezo-metacarpal, and the piezo hamate ligaments. The lateral surface forms the base of the pyramid, and it contains a flat quadrilateral shaped articular surface for the lunate. The articular surface for the lunate is continuous with the articular surface for the hamate. So if we look again, here's the articular surface for the lunate, and continuous with it is the articular surface for the hamate. The medial surface forms the summit of the pyramid and provides attachment for the ulnar collateral ligament. Blood enters from the dorsal and the palmar regions. The dorsal surface contains a ridge that runs from medial to lateral. Anywhere from two, three, or four vessels enter through this ridge and supply the majority of the bone. The palmar surface contains an oval-shaped articular facet for the pisiform. Vessels enter distal and proximal to this facet and supply the palmar 40% of the bone. In most people, the dorsal and the palmar vessels do anastomose, making the blood supply to this bone quite rich. Therefore, an AVN or an avascular necrosis and non-unions following a fracture are quite rare. The triquetrium is the second most commonly fractured carpal bone following the scaphoid. Dislocation of the triquetrum are quite rare because a number of strong ligaments hold it in position. For side determination, hold the common edge of the two largest facets facing towards you. So if you recall, the facet for the lunate and the facet for the hamate are continuous, and this would be the common edge between them. Next, you find this oval-shaped articular facet for the pisiform, and have that facing superior. So again, you find the common edge of the facet for the lunate and the hamate, have that facing towards you, find the facet for the pisiform and have it facing superior. Now the side that the pisiform facet is facing will tell you which type of specimen you have. In this case, it's pointing left, therefore this would be a left bone.